Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple Tile of Pathology. In today's tutorial, I will be explaining you as to how to identify the instruments which you encounter as a student in pathology and also to know various uses of these instruments. These instruments are often kept as spotters in your examinations. Right? The detailed description of each and every instrument will be dealt in a separate video. Now, I will be just giving you how to identify these instruments, name of the instrument and few important uses of these instruments. Okay, This is SBAX albuminometer. This is a tube with markings on it. The marking R stands for reagent, U stands for urine and it has graduations from 0 to 12 in grams. The uses, it is used to estimate albumin in urine quantitatively. Quantitative estimation of albumin in urine. This is urinometer. This has three parts. The lower end is called the weight. The middle one is called the float and the upper one is called stem which has calibrations. The calibrations is present to measure the specific gravity ranging from 1.000 to 1.060. Uses, it is used to measure the specific gravity of urine. This is Windrope's tube. It is closed at one end and open at the other end. This is 110 millimeter long. It has graduations from 10 to 0 from about downwards and on the opposite side it's 0 to 10 from above downward. Uses determination of packed cell volume or hematocrit, determination of ESR and also for the preparation of Buffy coat. So that's a disposable LP needle or lumbar puncture needle. It has a needle with stylet inside. This is a stainless steel lumbar puncture needle which can be reused. Indications of lumbar puncture, diagnostic indication for the analysis of CSF during myelography and therapeutic indications like during spinal anesthesia and treatment by chemotherapy or by antibiotics. Now these are vacutainer tubes which are color coded plastic tubes with rubber stopper. They are basically used to collect blood for various investigations. The first one is a blue colored cap. The anticoagulant present here is 3.2% sodium citrate. This tube is used to collect blood for various coagulation studies like you know estimation of prothrombin time and APT. This is a vacutainer tube with grey colored cap. It has sodium fluoride as an anticoagulant used for glucose estimation. The red tube without anticoagulation used for serological investigations. The green one heparin and anticoagulant used for bone marrow studies. The lavender colored cap EDTA as anticoagulant for various hematological investigations like in complete hemogram etc. This is a Westergren pipette, a pipette which has both ends open. This is 30 centimeters long and just for comparison with Wintrope's tube, one is a tube shorter and the longer one is the Westergren pipette. Uses to estimate erythrocyte sedimentation rate. The first 10 cm has no markings. The next 20 cm has markings from 0 to 200. This is new bar chamber. Improved new bar chamber to be more specific because the lines in this chamber is very clear. This is a thick crystal slide which is around 30 into 70 mm and 4 mm thick. In the center of the slide, you have a slide counting grid. Can you make out that plus shape? That's a counting grid, which is 3 mm into 3 mm. It has 9 big squares. Each square is 1 mm into 1 mm of about 1 mm square area. Uses used for counting of cells. RBC, WBC, platelets and also used for counting spermatozoa in semen analysis. This is Sala's bone marrow aspiration needle. It has three parts. That is a trocar, that is a cannula and that is the adjustable side guard for adjusting the depth of penetration. It's very important to note that this side, side guard is adjustable. You can adjust the depth. For example, during your during bone marrow aspiration in manubrium sterni, you can actually tighten the screw wherever you want so that you know exactly as to how much depth you will be entering inside. 
so that you can prevent damage to the underlying structures, particularly major blood vessels and the heart beneath the sternum. Indications of bone marrow aspiration, the most importantly in the diagnosis of megaloblastic anemia, leukemias, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, multiple myelomas and fever of unknown origin. This is the complete set of Salis hemoglobinometer. It has a bottle, brown bottle for n beta HCl and Salis hemoglobinometer which is a comparator with brown glass. That's a HB2, that's a glass tearer and HB pipette. This is Salis graduated hemoglobin tube. You can see that there are two different markings. The red one in the form of percentage from 10 to 140 percent. 10 to 140 percent below upwards and the yellow marking is hemoglobin in grams percentage. The maximum is 22 grams percent. So it starts from 2 to 22 grams percent. Do not get confused with Wintrope's tube. This is the hemoglobin pipette. Unlike RBC and WBC pipette, this does not have a central bulb and it has a marking which says 20 cubic mm. Uses estimation of hemoglobin by acid hematin method. That is a glass stirrer rod. This is actually a comparator with brown glass as standard. Those are the two brown glasses. The center area marked for placing the salis graduated hemoglobin tube. So this is salis hemometer or hemoglobinometer used for estimation of hemoglobin by acid hematin method. This is Wim Silverman liver biopsy needle. It has three parts, the stillet, or trochar, the cannula, look at that beveled edge. It has a trochar or stillet and that's a bifid needle. That bifid needle is longer than the cannula. It has a sharp cutting edge with longitudinal grooves, you know. That edge is for cutting the tissue. As I said, this needle is longer than the cannula. It retains the tissue when the needle and cannula are withdrawn. Indications are uses of liver biopsy needle for performing liver biopsy, indications for liver biopsy, evaluation of jaundice, cirrhosis, storage disorders and for diagnosis of various tumors of liver. Thank you for watching. I have just given a very brief overview of various instruments used in pathology, used as spotters in undergraduate pathology examinations. I'll be coming out with you know detailed descriptions of each and every instrument and the procedural details as well as the various uses, contraindications and everything. So stay tuned. If you have liked this video, please hit the like button. Do comment. Don't forget to subscribe because I'm coming out with many more exciting videos. And don't forget to share if you find this video useful. Thank you.